Yo guys, this is Quill from Bucket Cats, and I'm gonna go over early game strategy in Civilization V. Now the early game is super important, because even in a game as long as Civ, if you mess up the first 50 turns, it could completely screw you over later down the road. So I'm going to cover the first 90 turns and talk about things like how fast to expand, which social policies to acquire, and what to do when dealing with other civilizations. So with that all said, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm playing as the Shoshone, who have really great early game advantages. They start with a Pathfinder, which is a scout as powerful as a warrior, that can choose its bonus from Ancient Ruins. So more than any other Civ, the Shoshone are dependent on finding as many ruins as possible. Also, every city they found will start with additional territory. So before even touching my settler, I always move my other unit to a hill or an area that looks interesting to reveal more of the map and other potential starting locations. In this case, my settler's starting location is in Tundra, which isn't totally useful. However, there's a mountain nearby which will come in handy for research later down the road. So I'm going to move my settler down to the mountain, which will take around two turns. Although you should avoid taking more than two or three turns before founding your first city, you shouldn't be afraid to move your settler to a better spot. The first thing you should produce is a scout. You need scouts as soon as possible to nab ruins and discover valued city locations, um, and also to meet as many civs and city-states as possible. And by the way, never build a granary unless you have the resources it improves by the city. After you make your scout, you should make a worker, and then another settler. Don't worry about making a monument, because you'll be getting a free one from tradition anyway. For research, just be smart about it. If you have luxury resources nearby, research the tech needed to improve the tile. And if you're not exactly sure what to research, just beeline towards writing. Because if your city has enough production, you can go for the Great Library. Okay, so move your warrior, or in my case Pathfinder, to nearby hills for added visibility, and once you see a ruin, just head straight towards it. Try to stop by as many city-states as possible as well for the extra gold, since that'll come in handy later. Don't stray too far away from your city in case you need to deal with barbarians. Anyway, for uh, social policies, you want to just beeline through all of tradition in the following order. First you want to go for legalism, then landed elite, then monarchy, aristocracy, and then finally oligarchy. You just want to go for tradition because liberty is kind of situational um, and not really recommended, and honor is only good for early game, whereas tradition will provide a really good foundation for growth. So by around turn 30 or 40, you should have made your settler and founded your second city. You want to put your second city near a luxury resource, natural wonder, or ideally both. And after making your settler, you want to start production on a shrine, because having a religion is going to help you early and mid-game. And after you finish the shrine, start building an army of 5 to 7 archers in your two cities. If there is a warmongering or otherwise very weak civ nearby, relocate your army towards their city, because warmongering civs are usually taken out early in the game, so you may as well be the one to do it. So once you have enough religion, you get to make a pantheon, and for that you want to ideally do something that increases your faith. If you don't have any good options, then just go for fertility rights for the extra 10% growth. Eventually you'll make a great profit, where you can create your own religion. I personally like the perks Tithe and the Cathedral, but you can choose whatever suits your needs best here. Okay, just a side note, my Pathfinder was totally gonna die right here when the Indonesians just body blocked the barbarians, so props to them. Sell your embassies for 25 gold to countries that you either want to be friends with or aren't a threat. All of this gold is going to go towards another settler. When possible, you should steal a worker from a city-state. After you grab the worker, just immediately declare peace. It's kind of underhanded, and they will be angry at you for a while, but they'll eventually forget about it, and you get a free worker. By turn 60, you should have at least one caravan running, preferably to a major city. Make sure it's safe for the caravan to travel to. You don't want to lose it to barbarians. As soon as you declare friendship with another Civ, sell your luxury resources to them for 240 gold, even if you only have one of it. You'll take a happiness hit temporarily, but you'll have the advantage of buying another settler very early on. If you don't have Brave New World, you can sell these luxury resources without a declaration of friendship, which makes things a ton easier. 
This isn't mandatory if you have enough archers, but I definitely recommend discovering construction before getting into a war. You'll be able to upgrade all of your archers into composite bowmen, which are much stronger. That said, don't delay a war for too long, because in the meantime the enemy Civ could have made more units or discovered a new tech, or made another city even. While you're building your army, try to satisfy as many city-states as possible without going too far out of your way. And once you have enough units, send them towards the enemy Civ's territory and declare war. At this point, you can just focus your production into a wonder that works for you. Eventually capture their city, and repeat if they have another one at this point. If not, they're out of the game and you can go back to peace. Puppet any city you capture, unless they're terrible, in which case just raise them. If the city's really nice, you can puppet them until they're no longer revolting, and then annex them. Make sure you have mathematics so that you can construct the courthouse. And if they're going to stay a puppet, build trading posts nearby, since puppeted cities automatically focus on gold. So by turn 90, you should have your four cities. You should also have a decent army, and if you haven't gotten them back already, you should be getting your luxury resources soon, which will boost your happiness back to normal. We have these temporary hits to gold and happiness, which will be resolved now that we have these four cities, but we have a really good start right now, and no matter which victory type you go for, we're definitely in a good spot. Okay, just to quickly show what I'm talking about, I fast forwarded 20 turns and got my research to 33, my gold per turn to 27, and my happiness to 13. I easily did this by constructing libraries in my two major cities, getting my luxury resources back, creating another trade route, and having workers upgrade other resource tiles. And that's my guide for early game strategy and civilization. Um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to just put them in the comments, and I'll be glad to answer them. Um, not even, you know, if it has to do with early game, late game, mid game, um, a specific civilization. Yeah, just shoot me a question, I'll be glad to answer. If you liked the video, feel free to hit the like button, and if you want to check out more of our stuff, please subscribe. Also, if you have any ideas for future Civ videos, just put them in the comments. I'll uh, check them out and see what I can do. That's all for now guys, this is Quill from Bucket Cats, and I'll see you later.